Welcome to Scruffy City Aquatics live stream, and this is our third part on a series on how to fur a tank. And tonight we will be talking about deficiencies. So before we get started, let me, let me pull us up. Yeah, we're over here on the, on the side here. Before we get started, just want to say hey to everyone who's already in the chat, been uh, chatting with everyone a little bit. Uh, while I was getting set up, and it's good to see everyone who's made it out. We'll uh, we'll talk about who all is here in just a moment. But I also want to take a moment and thank everyone uh, on the replay who's watching this after the fact. And it's very cool that you all take the time to watch these and hear me ramble. And Tanner provides some good knowledgeable information. <laughs> I think we both ramble a good bit. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. I, I think it's a prerequisite for live streaming. You have to be able to ramble. Oh, definitely. I'm going to keep the water close and the uh, mute button. I've developed a little bit of a cough. And unfortunately, I have people in the house with the flu. So I'm hoping it's just a little seasonal allergies. But, you know, not been my luck so far this year. Flu is not fun. No, I, I did get a flu shot, um, but it was last week, so I don't know how boosted I am against it. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, you know, if I get anything, it's just mild, but, you know, hopefully nothing. Definitely. I hope you don't get too sick. Looks yeah. like we already got some people in the chat. We got Keep Keeping Aquatics, Dave from Basement Aquatics. And let's see, TJ Autocross, thanks for joining us. What's Red up, TJ? Red Laser. And then the Zen Ginger, of course, our wonderful one of our wonderful mods who keeps everything running. As always, a shout out to the Zen Ginger for everything they do behind the scenes. And we've also got Silver Creek Aquatics. And Working on, on his Wi-Fi. I know you that and Mitch be uh, good buddies with that one, then. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of that lately, and still, I, I will drop at some point. I promise. Looks like Red Laser says, "Hey, Mitch, congrats on the 301 subscriber count." Yeah, you know that that's exciting. I was I was really happy to see that. Um, you know, the 200s went by pretty quick, and that was really cool. I'm trying to pull it up right now, um, and see. Yeah, the 301. So thank you everyone who's subscribed to the channel. I promise I do have plans for more videos. It's a crazy season and uh, I haven't gotten to it. I've, I've got other stuff. I've got to get an email out before this weekend for the club. I'm behind on everything. But thank you, Red Laser. I appreciate that. It's, uh, you know, extremely thankful for that and for everyone who's, who's subscribed and liked stuff and commented uh, you know, it's awesome. I really enjoy doing this and especially the live streams, interacting with everyone and uh, the subscriber count. You know, it's one of those things that makes you feel a little bit better because otherwise it's like, well, maybe maybe I shouldn't be doing this. So it's nice to see the uh, the number continue to rise anytime it drops every now and then it'll drop like four or five people. I'm like, oh, what did I say? Uh, it must just be the bots. Looks like we've also got Nancy B in Tennessee. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, Nancy, good to see you again. I did get your message. I don't know if you saw it on the Discord, but I, I got your email. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. All Things Fish is here. Hello, All Things Fish. And we're caught up in the chat, so that's cool. Uh on on the note of the 301 subscribers, awesome. Thank you. I wanted to point out something else happened today that has me very excited. And that is a community tab has shown up on Scruffy City Aquatics. So I, I do have the community tab. I have been posting all day over there. I have I have left Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and all those other things, and I'm just focusing, uh, uh, putting all my thoughts over it. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to spam it like that, but I have put a lot of stuff on there, uh, especially talking about the live stream, because I realized after I made my first post that I could actually use it and utilize it, um, and so I, I just kept going, just kept posting things. 
that's what it's there for. Congrats on, I know you were really wanting, wanting that community tab because it's a great way to, you know, be able to communicate, um, you know, instead of a, a full blown video, you can just post something real quick. People can see it. You can let us yeah. you know, give updates on live streams. So congrats on that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, you can post polls and pictures and stuff like that. So I can kind of get some feedback from those who are interested. Um, today, it, it dawned on me while I was putting stuff together just a couple of hours ago that I could ask people for pictures of their own plants with deficiencies. And we did have a couple of people, Nancy B being one of them and uh, Basement Aquatics being the other who did send us some pictures. So we've got a few uh, pictures to look at once we go through these deficiencies and kind of talk about what might be going on uh, with their uh, their plants. Yeah, definitely. I, I've always struggled with the nutrient deficiencies in plants just because I think it's such a hard thing to diagnose, you know? Yes. Because then it, it can be a combination of things that represent, you know, one nutrient one deficiency or it can just be that one variable missing and it's really hard to pinpoint yeah what deficiencies and, you may have and oftentimes it's probably more than one right mm -hmm. especially like with your with your macronutrients it's probably not it, you know it's probably just one of the, your npk but when you get to your micronutrients it's likely more than one that's causing the issues um and so you may you may make some changes and see that you've still got a deficiency somewhere else. Um, Absolutely. But we'll talk about that a little bit. And Zen Ginger, thank you. I did see where you posted it in the, uh, in the fish cord um, that the, that the bot didn't have us out there yet. So thank you for taking care of that for us. It's a test run. Yeah. I, I like playing around with this stuff and seeing what we can do with it, how we can utilize it. Um, I, I like shorts. Uh, YouTube's been pushing shorts recently. Um, their, their sh YouTube short format. Uh, they've, they've talked a lot about what they may or may not do with it. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with that. I have a lot of fun with those trying to match up what's going on with some music because, um, I just think it's fun to throw music on everything. I put a little beastie boys on my Harley Quinn Rasboras today. So, um, it, it, I think I think that's fun. I enjoy watching a lot of other people's. Rico's got some good ones out there. Chattanooga Ed's got some pretty good sh uh, YouTube shorts game. You ought to check that out. Um, but yeah, I, I, have, similar, I like that. Kind of real similar to the Instagram Reels. Um, yeah, that's what they are. That's I, I like posting those quite yeah. often because I'm I still have not got around to editing anything. So I just take little snippets and post that sometimes on my Instagram. Yeah, well, you know, you can put those. So if you record it, um, just like on your device, and then post it, you could also post it over on YouTube and start doing shorts. Some of me and uh, me and Dave have talked about it. Shorts are crazy because sometimes a YouTube short will get like five views, and then the next one gets five thousand. <laughs> it's just nuts. It's all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I I like to I like to throw stuff up and just see what sticks what was why did what did the algorithm pick up and send out to everybody because that's all it is it's who did it get in front of because it just counts yeah. anytime it starts playing on a screen it counts it yeah that's like the instagram reels too i had posted when i first made that a my aquarium dedicated account i posted a couple of reels and got like several hundred likes and i was like what is what's going yeah. on here and then about you know the next one i posted i got two <laughs> so yeah. I, was, I was like okay i don't know what i started doing wrong but but there's definitely a a trick to it to get that algorithm yeah. working for you one of the uh one of the first shorts that i saw some success with was uh the ram's horn snail when i found the ram's horn snail in the pond and um it just uh you know it was a, a quick little clip of it on a on a leaf of a plant and I put the, I don't remember the name of the song, it's escaping me, but the music from CSI, um, you just have to check it out. It's one of my very first shorts, and it just exploded. Like, it just kept going. I think it ended up with like 3,000 views on it. So, um, you know, considering my channel typically is, you know, less than 1,000, well, always less than 1,000 views, 
Uh, seeing those shorts do that's a lot of fun. It's just fun. It's all fun. What about uh, what about your week, Tanner? Before we get to talking about deficiencies, what's uh, anything new in the uh, in the hobby for you? Oh, you're getting ready for another meeting. Yes, yeah, I'm getting ready for a the second um, Music City Aquarium Society meeting. I'm real excited about it. Unfortunately, it is the same Saturday as the East Tennessee um, Club meeting, so yep. they kind of they kind of stuck us with that one. No, I'm I'm kidding. They had a conflict <laughs> with the uh, the UT game. Yeah, UT's on a uh, on a on a roll right now. We we definitely don't want to mess things up by taking some of the parking spaces oh, from the yeah. university. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so we've got our second meeting. Uh, Sarah is going to be talking about uh, native Florida killifish collection and uh, husbandry and keeping them. So that'll be very cool. I'm excited to see everybody come out again. Um, hopefully we have some returning um, members. That would be great. Hopefully we have people again. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you will. It, it, it'll be great. You guys will continue to have a good time. Um, it's just so much fun. Don't get discouraged if it falls off a little bit. I know the first couple of meetings, I don't know that it ever really dipped down too much, but it was different people every month mm. for a few months. And now really, if you come, it's, it's a lot of the same people, uh, coming now. So it's really cool because you get to know more people. It's crazy. You spend two or three hours with people and you don't have enough time to talk with people the way you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I, I, it's the, over and you're like, I didn't even speak to that person. <laughs> the, the first meeting, I remember just trying to talk to everybody. I was so excited for everyone to be there. And yeah. I felt I was like, I didn't like it's really hard to have a meaningful conversation with everyone, even though we didn't have a ton of people. I was like, I, you know, you still want to thank everybody for coming out because I was just yeah. so ecstatic. We've actually got well, we've got Chattanooga Ed in the chat. He was there. For yeah, the welcome first Chattanooga meeting. Ed. Good to and see you. And then Nancy well, D in Tennessee says, go dogs. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know what that word is. You're dogs. Nancy in I don't get it. Tennessee. How can you? Yeah. I mean, somebody in Tennessee. I, I don't know that word. I, I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> uh, Basement Aquatic says, boo. I think that's in reference to Nancy B. <laughs> Um, Cheryl Green says, looking forward to it, Tanner. Cheryl must have been uh, or must be planning on coming to the meeting. Yes, Cheryl was at the last meeting and it was a fantastic pleasure meeting you. Um, super knowledgeable about, about a lot of things. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you again. I know that y'all made a pretty, pretty decent trip to make it there. So I appreciate that. Nancy, I'm going to go back up, but I'm going to skip down. Nancy B says, I'm not from here. <laughs> Always a dog. I understand. If I moved somewhere, I don't think I could root for anybody but the Vols, even, even during the decades and decades of a dry spell <laughs> where things have been kind of tough. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice to be on top right now, or at least to be uh, pretty high up there. Um, backing up a little bit, uh, I wanted to, where did I, where did it go? Oh, Keep Keeping Aquatic says, wish a fish club near me was active. Uh, we, we know the feeling we were there too. And that's why we helped start them. So, you know, who knows, maybe just get the conversation out there. I think that's key. Uh, there most likely are Facebook groups in your area. And when you go to them, it's probably just classified ads. It's just people trying to sell all of their hobby junk. Um, but if you'll start posting in there about the hobby, just, I mean, just conversation starters, like, you know, um, talking about something that's going on with your tank or maybe ask a question, it doesn't have to be, you know, anything too enlightened. Just start talking and pe you'll, you'll find people who want to talk. Then take yeah. that a step further and start talking with them uh, directly still on the board. So other people are on the group. So other people can see it and then start talking about a group and it'll happen. I, it, it will. Definitely. I was amazed in Knoxville with how many people were just excited and are now involved. Uh, Chattanooga Ed wants to know what is Knoxville talking about this weekend? Are you trying to compare it to Tanner's <laughs> to their, to their meeting? Um, I know Ed's got to make a decision, but uh, we are doing DIY projects. I do not have the inside scoop on what DIY projects will be talked about, but my understanding is it's like 
three or I, I don't want to put a number on it. It's multiple. It's not just one. It's more than one. I think it's more than two. Could be as many as 15. I doubt that, but there'll be some DIY projects talked about and uh, probably uh, we'll probably see it happen real time. Um, so, you know, we get to see JT hurt himself or blow something up. It'll be awesome. Um, <laughs> Must I take. think the mansion said no fire, though, so kind of limited. Uh, the Zen Ginger says, I'm in Texas, so I don't have a dog or a dog in this fight. I'm excited. It should be a good game, but it looks like we've got Aqua Balls in the chat as well. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. So yeah, that should be an exciting uh, Saturday. I know we'll both probably be in meet at our meetings during the, at least some portion of the game. Yeah, if it's anything like the last time that was happening, the meeting will be a little slow. Where there won't be as many people. Um, I'm, I'm expecting that there won't be as many people uh, because our, our smallest meeting was during a game. And... Um, also, I would imagine a lot of people will have earpieces <laughs> because I caught a few last time. <laughs> and um, I myself went to the restroom a few times because the people that work at the visitor center for the mansion were watching the game. So I was able to check in as I went through. Let's see. Yeah, Nancy B. Um, <laughs> talking about the ranking doesn't matter until Saturday. It's true. It, I mean, it doesn't matter until Saturday. Honestly, it's the game that is probably the greatest chance of a loss for us. It's, it's definitely sorry to talk sports for those of you who aren't into it, but um, we've had a great season. The volunteers, the university of Tennessee is so far having a winning season for the first time in a very long time um, and has crushed a couple of our rivals and the Georgia game is considered a rivalry for us, but not so much for Georgia. <laughs> they don't consider us a rivalry, I'm sure. Uh, but it'll be good to have that going again because it's been a while. Uh, that game's always, uh, wow, it's always one to look forward to and uh, whew, gets the heart pumping for sure. But let's segue probably back into uh... – Aquariums for the, for the remainder <laughs> yeah. of the show. Everybody leaves. Yes. Everybody else Before is leaving. Everybody, because we uh we're not a sports live stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep keeping aquatics says yeah. I can't relate to this stuff. Never seen this stuff in my state. Only see nonsense traffic when the games are here. Yeah, I understand. I I grew up in a in a college town, and uh, yeah, you don't go downtown when it's game time. That's why we don't meet. So, but. Yeah. <laughs> We are going to be talking about fertilizing your tank and talking specifically about deficiencies tonight. Uh, before we get started on that, again, thank you all, everyone. Um, way to stay on topic, Tanner. Sorry, sometimes the chat, I've just got to look, uh, especially when they're all caps, then Ginger, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so um, we always want to say, we're not experts. We're not trying to be experts. I'm not, we're not here to try and convince you that we know it all. Um, that's not who we are. That's not what we're capable of. And I've said it multiple times in these live streams and on my channel, there's probably plenty of people in this chat that know more than I do about this. Uh, we're only the, the purpose of having live streams where we talk about these things is that as, um, as hobbyists, we want to see new people get into the hobby. And when new people get in the hobby, they go through the same things we all have experienced, those of us who've been in the hobby for a little while. And since we've experienced it, we can speak to it. We can speak from our own experience and we can help those around us. I'm always, um, I'm always surprised in a forum or on Facebook, in a group, um, anywhere when I, when I come across an instance where I have more information than somebody else. I'm like, how do you not know that that's out there? Like, I feel like, duh, I know. Um, not to those people, but myself. That didn't come out right, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm always surprised when that happens. So you can't, I think I think it's easy online to assume people have already heard something um, when in fact maybe they haven't. They just haven't come across it yet for whatever reason. A lot of what we're going to talk about tonight is very basic stuff that's been out there a while. And um, I'm, I'm sure it'll, it'll go along with 
everyone else's experiences for the most part. That being said, and I think we talked about it. I don't remember if we were already on live when we started talking about it or not, but we've already talked about it. Um, there are, it's not always cut and dry, right? So I'm going to have a graphic that we're going to look at. It's going to have some information on it. And honestly, most of the time, it's accurate. Most of the time you can look at something like this and there's a ton of them out there and they're all very good. I actually went through and looked at a lot of them the past week. Um, but there's a lot of these graphics out there that uh, provide this information. A lot of times, most of the time it's accurate, but there are occasions where something looks like something else, or maybe you have a couple of things going on and those two things together make it look like something else. So it's just a starting point. It's a place to start um, considering what might be happening. Um, I know that I've said forever, the Java Fern, it's got to be potassium. It's got to be potassium. Well, even spending some time in it this week, I'm starting to think maybe it's not potassium. Maybe potassium is part of the problem, but maybe there's something else going on. And then maybe these stem plants, just a few weeks back, we did diagnose my tank. We did not come to any conclusions. Well, looking at some of this, I'm beginning to see some things that are happening in my tank that maybe might be because of some deficiencies that I didn't know about. So uh, I'm going to be experimenting a little bit with uh, the 75 gallon and trying to find what might be going on. So I, I definitely want to point out that although it's likely that these diagrams that are out there are accurate, sometimes it's, it's a combination of things. Sometimes your water might be the issue, might be your lighting, might be your CO2. You know, there's a number of things that could be going on. You may be just overfeeding um, that might be causing some issues uh, for you. And um, those, of course, are not always going to be covered in a graphic uh, like the one we'll talk about tonight. Uh, add anything before we get to the graphic? Yeah, definitely. One thing I love about speaking back to our own experience and why we um, do these streams, one thing I love about it is, is it is a conversation starter. We get so many people in the chat who are so knowledgeable um, and they give they give their own input and experiences and we're all just learning. And that's another thing that I love about doing these topic series is that I take time and do a little more research than I may normally would do. Um, and just really brush up and learn quite a bit more than I'm, you know, I look, we, Mitch and I both learn a great deal from doing these, um, series as well. So that's, before we get into that, that's, that, that's all I've got. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. I was agreeing with you. I absolutely learn every time I dig into something like this and even beyond, like, I think, oh, I've got a pretty good grasp on certain things about this topic, whatever the topic may be. And then when I start researching, I'm like, oh, wow, there's some stuff way off there that I never even considered or imagined. And that's that's how it is in the hobby. It's definitely a hobby for people with patience and people who want to learn. Um, you know, the people that just want to buy a setup, set it up and look at some fish. I feel bad for them because they're going to get discouraged in the hobby because it's it's a uh, you know, you got to be paying attention to, to what you have. Yeah, you can get it there to a point where it's a lot easier, but you're always going to have to be thinking and putting a little bit of effort into it. And I think for most of us in the hobby, we enjoy that. Definitely. <clears throat> Definitely. All right. All right. So on the topic of the diagram and uh, images. So I wanted to do something totally different with this episode. Uh, this live stream was going to be, I was going to pull a bunch of pictures and I was going to have examples of what these look like so that we can look at it and talk about it. Life was busy and I didn't get to it soon enough. And then when I started working on it, um, I had a really hard time getting what I needed. And I didn't have pictures of my own. And then so I was looking at, well, I'll have to use somebody else's. I need to give them credit. I don't necessarily know who they are, things like that. So ran into a lot of issues. And so I pulled out an old tried and true. Um, this graphic's an old graphic for the Internet. You all I'm. I'm sure many of you, I'm not going to say all, many of you have seen it before and that's why I used it because there's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, n not nicer looking, I guess we can say nicer looking. There's a lot fancier looking ones out there. Um, and that was the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make my own and have time to do that. So, uh, but there are some that, um, maybe are a little more detailed, uh, you know, look a little more polished, but this is the tried and true. This is honestly the one I have saved on my phone that I pull up uh, still most of the time when I'm answering a question or looking at something in my own tank. 
So um, yeah, I'm just we're going to use this one. And like I said, you've probably seen it, um, probably seen it on live streams, um, probably seen a lot of people talk about it. It's possible if you've been in the hobby online. Um, it's the one that is my go-to. I, I do have others that I've started using, but this is the first one I always think of when I think about these issues, when I think about these deficiencies. So, um, it, you know, it would be good. Um, so keep keeping this is exactly what I was going to say. Um, they have that one hanging in the plant section at the local fish store. I think that's a great idea. I think having a poster like this, um, maybe that's what I need to do. I need to go ahead and make mine put my logo on it and, ha and have it printed off and give it to my local fish store. <laughs> Say, Hey, here's some education. <laughs> That's a good idea. So, um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to kind of start from here and, and to, and work. It's going to be kind of awkward for me. I'm having to do things differently. I had some equipment go out on my setup, so I do not have a mouse and um, I'm trying to swap between things. So there'll be a lot less swapping than I would like as well. Um, just trying to work with what we have. So first of all, not talking about anything on this sheet because this sheet doesn't cover it. One of the first things that I typically see with, um, usually when people are, are asking questions about their deficiencies, a lot of people will throw up, um, not throw up, will point out uh, that it could just be that the plant is transitioning to the aquarium. How long have you had it? It's always a good question to consider first. How long has this plant been in my tank? Where did I get it? Do I know if it was grown immersed or has it always been underwater? How long has it been underwater? And then, you know, one of uh, my local fish store uses um, RODI water, uses our RO water. Um, they have both, but they use RO water. And so anytime I get something, I try to keep in mind that, you know, my system's a lot different from theirs. Um, and, and it's the same with plants. The plants are, you know, they're in a vastly different water. Um, this is also the place that I got my first crypts from and did not experience any melt. So, you know, here or there, sometimes, sometimes it's an issue. Sometimes it's not. So, uh, but you do want to consider, these things is it possible this plant is just transitioning from its immersed growth from being grown out of the water to now being in water 24 7 and that absolutely might be what you have going on so do consider that once you've ruled that out though uh, there's a lot of things uh, to look at i actually was going to pull up i had a picture of um, a crip that was grown out of water and you see the very different leaves that are on it. Uh, same thing with like uh, Amazon sword, Amazon swords, when you buy them and they've been grown out of water, they'll have like this, instead of being this long sword, which is where the name comes from, it'll be more like, you know, this little stem and then a, a big round leaf at the end. And, and that's going to, that's going to melt away and, and be gone. And then you'll see new growth. Um, so just know if it's transitioning to your aquarium, you're going to get new growth. The roots are what matter. Definitely. Unfortunately, quite a few of the plants that you'll find at stores have been grown immersed by the, um, you know, wholesaler supplier. And there's a couple of ways you can kind of tell, um, especially with stem plants, the leaf structure is almost always going to be different um, unless it's something like a bacopa. Um, and then most of your, you know, your crypts, your Amazon swords, your Java fern, um, Obitis, things like that are going to be grown immersed. So if you get it in your tank and it's not doing well at first, don't freak out. It has to, you know, trans transition from that immersed growth to the aquatic growth. And it's pretty interesting for most plants, the, you know, leaf structure is actually different for the immersed versus submerged growth. So it's just got to transition um, to be a fully aquatic plant. And a lot of the plants we have in the hobby aren't true aquatic plants necessarily. They're mm -hmm. more riparian plants, like your Anubias, your uh, Bucephalandra, Java fern, things like that actually grow on the sides of riverbanks and are partially submerged during the wet season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's definitely something that you might be dealing with. Um, I did see that Keeper Kane is here. Welcome to the chat, Kane. Nice to have you. Uh, Geek Boy is here as well. I don't ask questions of my deficiencies. I have plenty of people to tell me about them. 
and that feels that feels true um, for me in the hot, especially in the hobby and around the internet. <laughs> and um, Cheryl's talking about aquatic critters and how they grow theirs out of the water, uh, or some of the suppliers, and that that's normal. Um, <laughs> most of your potted plants come that way, and then um, you know some stores do try to um, transition them before they're sold. And I think that's always good. And then I know some people online will put a picture of what you're going to get. It's going to melt. And this is what it'll end up being. So um, yeah. I think that's a good idea. I think that's probably a good idea maybe to have those pictures in the store and to say, hey, look, you know, that's not necessarily what it's going to look like when it's grown or have multiple, you know, have your newer ones toward the back and your older ones in the front so that you're you're getting the ones that have possibly done more transitioning. So that's a good idea. Those are, you know, I think those are good ideas to kind of com combat, combat some of that. It's going to combat them. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. It's just a whole lot easier for the wholesaler to grow a MRSH. There's a lot less maintenance and you don't have to deal with algae. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, let's see. Keep keeping. I believe I got your email. I'll I'll when we get to that point, I'll try to pull it up um, on the uh, on on the internet and see if we can take a look at it. So thank you for sending that. All right. So I feel like uh, the number one for most beginning hobbyists, other than the transitioning, is going to be nitrogen, and there's a very good reason for that. When you get into the hobby, you learn about the cycle the nitrogen cycle. And you learn that you can poison your fish if you don't do a good job of taking care of this. And so we all got in the hop and we all got in the habit early on of changing water as often as possible to keep all of those, uh, you know, all the, everything that's toxic out of our aquarium so that we don't kill our fish or we kill fewer fish than it looks like we're going to. <laughs> so um, we get in that habit, it becomes normal, and we just keep changing the water. We don't pay attention to nitrates. We decide we're going to add plants, and we start starving them of nitrogen because we're constantly pulling it out of the water. Maybe we're not fertilizing enough, or maybe we're simply just doing too much, you know, too big, too large of water changes too often um, for our plants. We just need to give them a little bit of space, let them grow a little bit, and let that uh, the nitrates build up. The um, as far as far as what does this look like? And if you look here, you'll see there's a couple of places to look for nitrogen deficiencies. And although new growth is at the top, I want to jump. I want to take a look towards the bottom where you see early signs of nitrogen, nitrogen deficiencies. Um, you'll start seeing it in your older leaves first. So that's you typically going to be your lower leaves. Um, they'll begin to turn yellow and they'll begin to become translucent, okay? So at the tips, they'll start to like disintegrate and the oldest leaves will start falling off. They'll, they'll just start falling off, floating around in your tank. That's an early sign that you have a nitrogen deficiency. So you need to increase your nitrates. The easiest way to do that's going to be to use a fertilizer, which is what we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. I just want to add one quick thing there. On the other hand, you know, your older leaves, um, leaves on plants do not last forever. So right. just if you've got one or two leaves on a couple plants that are turning yellow and falling off at the bottom, that's not the end of the world. Um, yeah. it, th that's what, that's why we have said multiple times throughout, it's very hard to accurately diagnose, you know, exactly and pinpoint what the deficiency may be. Cause sometimes they're, they're just a myriad of factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then with this, um, when nitrogen deficiencies are really bad, it'll begin to like stunt the growth of your new leaves, and so they'll be they'll be more yellow, more white. Um, the leaves won't be as large as some of the older leaves. Um, if this is the case, definitely test your nitrates, see what's going on with your tank. Um, you know, a lot of people shoot for that twenty to forty parts per million. Uh, range uh, when they're keeping a fully planted tank. Now, if you've just got a few plants, I don't know that you necessarily need to be shooting up that high, depending on what they are too, right? 
I mean, not all plants are going to have as much of a uh, requirement on, on nitrates, but it's something that you need to do a little research on, look at your plant, find out what this plant needs specifically. Um, and uh, it's probably just going to be that you need to add some more fertilizer, start increasing. A lot of times that you see this, you're just, you're changing too much water, I feel. Yeah. And then one other thing is you could be having a lot of plant growth. And as those plants grow more, they take up that nitrogen. If you're not increasing your, uh, you know, say you start out the tank day one and you've got, mm -hmm. you know, 10 plants in there and you dose, you know, a couple pumps a week. Well, month three or four you've got 50 60 plants you know in there well you're going to need more nitrogen and a lot of times it's it's hard to scale it with your plant growth and yeah. another thing to think about um is when you do a big trim you're going to need uh less nitrogen or less you know fertilizers overall yeah, especially if you remove them, it's it's going to be, you know, you want to, you're dosing for the volume of plants that you have, not necessarily just the water volume. Um, so that's why, you know, uh, a lot of your fertilizers, they have like a minimum dosing um, schedule, not schedule, uh, directions on the bottle. And that's really just for when you get started. You're going to get to a point when the 75 was its fullest, I was putting twice the um twice the easy green in twice a day so you know in that sense i had all this anubius i had all that java fern i was trying to keep alive because <laughs> there was a lot in there um and at the same time i at the, i was dealing with a lot of floating plants that were really sucking up a lot of those nutrients uh and taking them from the other plants so i was trying to offset that um while losing the fight against duckweed Right. Nitrogen fight against duckweed. I was throwing it away last night. Had the trash can over next to the tank and just scooping it out. I want to say to welcome water change. to Mountain Greenery in the chat. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I also did a water change last night, um, specifically for nitrogen. I tested it because um, I was having some stag horn algae pop up, and what do you know? It was higher than I wanted it. Yep. So, did a water change. Yeah, mine was an unfortunate water change for sure. Um, I've got something going on in the tank. I've lost a few live bears uh, to what a lot of people will call live bear disease, thinning disease. And, um, you know, it, it's sometimes it happens just a few times and then it goes away. And I think everybody who raises live bears sees it from time to time. But um, it's it's claimed a number of fish at this point. So I have had to pull out the medications and deal with that probably be a a good topic for us sometime in the future moving on uh so we're, let's stay um let's stay at the top for a moment uh okay. now that we've covered nitrogen nitrogen you see it in both places very commonly and i feel like the early detector is going to be those bottom leaves uh, like you said though you're going to lose some leaves just because of age and then if you're seeing it on your upper growth it means you've got a severe nitrogen deficiency and you need to fix it um, so back at the top, uh, we've got calcium defi deficiency, all right? And this is one of those where I was talking earlier about sometimes you might fix one thing and then realize it was many things. It wasn't just the one thing. Um, so when you have a calcium deficiency, you see twisted leaves, all right? It, it, I've, I've used the term, term gnarly a few times when I've posted about it because I have this going on with my vallis scenario right now. So you'll, you'll see these twisted leaves. Uh, most people who experience this, though, have soft water or they're using RO or RODI water. Um, and you need to add minerals to your aquarium. And just like this says on the, um, on the little graphic here, it might also be potassium or magnesium overdose causing twisted pale new growth. So it could be that you've got too much of something else going in as opposed to just the calcium deficiency. Now, for me, I don't believe I have a calcium deficiency. I've not tested for calcium, so I can't say that for certain, but I have extremely hard water. Um, the chances of my water being low on calcium, I feel is pretty low. I have no issues with snails, right? All of my snails are, have healthy shells, so they're getting calcium, and I feed things that are kind of high in calcium too. So I don't think it's calcium. I think it... it, it quite possibly might be an overdose of something else. Um, 
Probably not potassium though, because of the Java fern. So you see how you got these, these little things that you're looking at and you're saying, okay, well, with this plant, I'm experiencing this twisting, but with this other plant, I see signs that it, that it's not getting enough potassium, probably not too much potassium. Maybe it's the MG. <laughs> it can get very complicated. It feels like the, uh, that, that picture with the guy with the bulletin board and all the pictures and the, the, the yarn connecting them. That's how, that's how it feels. And w one thing that's pretty interesting about calcium is that it's role. One of its main roles for plants is actually in the cell wall and cell membrane. Um, so when you have a calcium deficiency, your cell walls and membranes are actually going to be, you know, weaker and, um, mm -hmm not form properly and that's one of the things that can cause that twisting yeah yeah the um the picture that i used let me back up twice this vow right here vow shouldn't look like that see how it's all twisted up the one in the middle yeah. um that's the issue and i've got a few there's a few shoots that are like that and they are all in the same area of the tank so i'm wondering if it's has something to do with the flow maybe keeping them um i don't know working it could, on it I, i've had that happen to some of my vow too before and sometimes i guess when it comes out of the center the crown on the mm -hmm. plant it i feel like it can get mangled some you know not not unfurled properly okay um, that could be that could be part of it but like we've said there's so many different yeah. different aspects that it could be Nancy B says my vowel is twisted, but it's corkscrew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> corkscrew vowel should be twisted. It should be a little gnarly, but it looks more uniform than this. This just looks like there's something wrong. <laughs> and, and it's uh it's jungle vowel. <laughs> so let me get back over there and sorry, I just realized that I had the graphic up and not us. So I was making faces at everybody and you didn't know it. Um, I actually enacted the whole thing with the board and nobody saw that, but me and you, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's oftentimes there's a few things, like I said, this conversation is just getting you started on finding what it might be. Uh, so that's calcium, uh, iron. Uh, and this is one that I, I caution people. I'd made this mistake. Oh, I need more iron in my water. I'll start yes. dosing iron. Then you get blackbeard algae. So just know that if you have an iron problem, you got to go very slow and steady to take care of this. You don't want to just jump yes. in. Um, I, when you have an iron deficiency, you're going to see um, yellowing or paling of the leaf. The color is going to start to fade, um, but you're going to see much darker. The, the area around the veins of the leaf will remain dark. So um, you, you see that, that there's a difference there. Yeah, it's pretty uh, interesting. You know, iron is one of the micronutrients. You'll look at, um, you know, some of your fertilizer bottles and it'll have, you know, it's 0.05% iron. So you need very little of it. Um, and real good comment from the Zen Ginger here. Well, and lots of minerals need to be together to use properly in the human body. So plants are the same way. Plants yep. really are very similar there's a lot of mechanisms and uh, processes that occur within the cells and within within the plant that need different you know nutrients and minerals to carry specific proteins for building um i believe iron is used um it is a component in some enzymes um that are vital to plants. I don't know the exact processes, but that it's, but yes, there's many minerals that are needed um, in mm -hmm. combination. And that's why a lot of times it can show up as several different deficiencies or a deficiency in several things can look like one singular deficiency. Yeah. And I want to correct myself because as soon as I said it, I was like, wait a minute, that, that that's not right. So with iron, there's not darker veins. That's going to be magnesium. But with iron, you just get a yellowing and paling of the leaf. So I, I want to correct myself there because I didn't misspeak. And um, you're not necessarily going to see darker veins on that one. Um, and it is, um, you know, you do see it on the new growth. You could also see it on old growth. Definitely. I think one of the biggest things that one of the biggest myths 
in the hobby is that iron gives red plants. Yeah. Um, that's, that, to an extent, it does help with reddening of plants, but it does mm-hmm. not exactly produce the results, you know, that, that people have said. You can definitely... You can't just add this magic water to your aquarium and get red plants. <laughs> most of the time, it's highlighting and limited nitrates that actually bring out the reddest colors in plants because they're producing less uh, chlorophyll and sometimes in red you know for red plants the actually turning red is um, a reaction to highlighting you can almost think of it as uh, the plants getting a tan they need less chlorophyll because there's more light available yeah you were the first person to tell me that and it's funny because in the last few months i've i have heard it and seen it so many times since. And I don't know that I had ever heard it before because I've tried to keep, you know, some plants that were red. Um, and, but anyway, mystery snow guardians is here. Welcome. I also saw that Eric Wyrock is here. Thanks for coming by. And uh, so for iron, what do you do? Well, you add iron. You're going to have to add some iron. If you've got some iron deficiency, uh, depending on the type of plant that might mean that you need some iron in your substrate. So maybe you're, um, going to need to look at a root tab that ha- cause you got to place it in the substrate and it's not easy to get a powder down in there any other way. So you're going to need a capsule or something, uh, to get the iron down in there. And that's why when Tanner builds a new tank, he likes to put a little bit of, uh, uh, laterite. Is it laterite? Yeah. Laterite. And then I, I just like to cram as much nutrients as I can into the substrate. So that's why yeah. I'm not good at, I'm not, proficient at diagnosing deficiencies on my own. So I try to avoid them. (laughs) Right. Well, and you said that we were talking about these deficiencies and Tanner was like, I don't really deal with this. I just get algae. (laughs) He's like, I'm on the (laughs) other end of the spectrum. I don't ever have to deal with deficiencies. It's, it's the other end. So, uh, which could absolutely be the case for a lot of people. Maybe algae is our next topic. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to add it and then maybe it's through the water column and there's some products out there. One of the thing about iron is um, I believe iron is the mineral that um, a lot of the all in ones have trouble adding uh, enough to their mixture. And so a lot of the all in ones, um, you should be OK with the amount of iron that's in there, but you may need more. And so that's why you'll also find those same companies putting out bottles of just iron because they can't package more iron in that bottle for whatever reason. I'm not a rocket scientist. I don't know, but that's, that's what I, that's my understanding of the situation. (laughs) Zen ginger says they're low tech at the moment and they're Amania gracilis in their 20 long is pink at the top, but nowhere else. I assume it's lack of light. I would more than like without knowing anything else about the tank, I would not, I would be 90% sure that it'd be a lack of light. Uh, just because you'll notice most plants are going to be more colorful the closer they get to the light. Uh, yeah, it's getting shaded out higher, toward the bottom. Higher intensity, yeah. All right, let's move on. We're running out of time and we got a few pictures to look at. Yes. Uh, magnesium. Older leaves begin to turn lighter with darker veins. That's the one I accidentally talked about last time um and with this the you know there are some people who will add like epsom salt to try and deal with this i'm i with plants i'm not big on throwing salt in my tanks um my recommendation is just increase your all-in-one fertilizer i'm sure your plants start growing more healthy they'll enjoy all the other nutrients you're adding too just don't don't throw it all in at one time you know don't go overboard small changes you know small rudder big ship all of that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Um, the biggest which, thing is, you know, this is a hobby of patience. Change mm-hmm. tweak, like Mitch was saying, tweak one thing at once. Don't go changing the whole whole tank because then you won't know if it was that one thing you changed or if it was the hundred things you changed. Yeah. So potassium, I feel like that's one we talk about a lot on this live stream and on my channel. That is pinholes. Um, sometimes those pinholes will have some browning or yellowing, um, around the hole. And it can also cause a little bit of curling and paling along the edges of the leaf. So you may see it along the edges. Um, a lot of us have issues with Java fern and we know Java fern or potassium hogs. We know that we get little holes in our Java fern. 
that become big holes when the snails realize that there's some brown mushy plant that they can eat. And then, you know, we start to have issues um, with them. That's most likely what's going on for most people. And it's most likely what's going on with me. But I, I find it odd that I have some places where it looks like I may be high in potassium and yet this plant struggles. So I got to figure it out. Got to work through it. As far as how do you add potassium? Um, you can buy bottles of potassium just so just to add specifically um, to it. But one thing Tanner and I were talking about earlier this week, I was at my local fish store and I was having a good conversation with the owner, but because he was working at the store, we kept getting interrupted and I would just peruse. And so um, I went and picked up the CKM potassium and looked on the back of it and it was 6% uh, was the, uh, the amount of potassium in, in this liquid fertilizer. And so I was like, huh, you know what? I wonder what Easy Green has because that's what I typically dose. Easy Green has nine. So I don't know that I really need to add potassium by itself. Maybe just increase my Easy Green. I have no algae issues right now. So maybe just a little extra pump. Yeah, and then also, you know, another thing it could be, it could be your uh, phosphorus as well yep. that could be um, resulting in that sort of. Yeah, it sounds, the, um, it sounds algebra. likely, I believe, because, well, let's read the description. Okay, looking at the phosphorus, uh, the phosphate deficiency, it's on the very bottom of the diagram. Older leaves yellow and parts of the leaf is, are reabsorbed, leading to dead patches. The leaf falls off rather quickly, looks similar to early nitrogen deficiencies. So phosphate can leave this yellow brown patches, can start to look soggy, which is what you see in the pinholes of the potassium. But oftentimes with the java fern, it's not a hole that starts. It starts as there are sometimes holes, but oftentimes it starts with a brown patch. And so yeah, I'm beginning to wonder if it's not phosphate. And uh, one of the easiest way to add phosphates is to overfeed. <laughs> I don't recommend that. Don't overfeed your tank because it'll lead to algae issues. But your fish food is adding phosphates to uh, your aquarium. The big thing you don't want to be doing is removing phosphates. A lot of times people will, will hear that phosphates cause algae, so you want lower phosphates. And they try to remove them. Well, if you start removing them, you're going to have deficiencies in your plants. Um, so just keep in mind, you want to balance that. You want the balance of not having too much, which actually takes quite a bit, but not having too much while also having enough. <laughs> yeah, it's fine in that middle ground. That's why in, you know, in my hobby, I don't really ever use carbon in my tanks. Um, I yeah. don't use Fosgard, Purigen, any of those, any of those resins or anything that has is adsorptive. So it you know, is taking nutrients out of the water column. Um, mm -hmm. I don't use any of those because most of the time I'm trying to add more. Um, yeah. And it's kind of counting. In a, you know, I, I use carbon if I'm dosing something in a quarantine tank um, and I want to clean that out. But in a planted tank, I, I rarely try to strip nutrients unless it's with a water change. Yeah. Yeah, I and you know, there's there's a lot of people that will tell you that long term use of carbon can lead to other issues as well. So it's I always remove it and I hold it for if I need to remove uh, medicine. You know, you use a medication, you start seeing a lot of problems. Do a water change, throw some carbon in there, try to get it out. Um, that's why that's why I save it. Um, I did add um, in our notes, it's not on this diagram, but I have come across it multiple t times. Manganese is a nutrient that your plants need as well. And a deficiency of uh, manganese is yellow or white patches. Now, some plants actually do have a look where they ha are going to have patches like this. So you got to look into your plant, make sure that that plant isn't supposed to have those naturally. But if it's on a plant that shouldn't look like that, it's probably manganese. And again, your all-in-one fertilizer is your best bet. I don't, um, it's probably in, there's probably a bottle like Seachem's line. They probably got something that has Trace. Um, um, what's the other one? There's a couple of them that Seachem does, but Trace is one of them. It may have manganese in it, but I doubt you need to just specifically dose for that again. Usually just a little bit of extra all in one is, is good unless you're trying to do your own dry ferts. Yeah, looking at the nylog G 
uh, the Thrive Plus, which is what I use, it's got 0.17% manganese. It's not yeah. something you need a lot of. And right. uh, on that note of micronutrients, Mitch, it has 0.0006% of our favorite micronutrient. Yeah. Molybdenum. 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 Yeah, that one, which is necessary. I don't know what a deficiency in that looks like, but I'm sure it actually looks like one of these other deficiencies. Um, it probably like, just like we were talking about earlier and the Zen ginger pointed out, it's probably one of those things where not having this causes your plant to not be able to process something else. And that's what leads to issues. And a boron is another one that I believe is like that. You have to have certain amount of boron in order to do one of the functions. And I, again, not a rocket scientist, so I don't know what it is. I just know you need that's it. Because a lot of these uh, different nutrients that we're talking about really all relate to, uh, you know, photosynthesis and building, you know, the enzymes and protein, you know, building uh, blocks of the plant. So if you're missing one block, you can't really build a house. It's, it's going to fall down, mm -hmm. you know, or it may not look, you know, it's not going to look right. It may grow, but it won't look right. And that's better. Everything is just so interconnected. Yeah. So think of it this way. You may have all the studs, all the boards you need. You may have all the plywood you need. You may have all the concrete that you need. You may have everything that you need to, in order to get the frame of this house up. But if you don't have nails, you're in trouble. Exactly. Or screws, but nails. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that is kind of running through these kind of top level. We've got a few examples that were sent to us. So let's, it, are you ready to jump on that? And let's take a look at those. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make this a little bit larger. And all right, this one was sent to us from Dave, and it is the dreaded Java fern. I tried to include the, uh, the diagram on here as well so we could refer to it, but I don't know that I can actually read that. It's a little small on my end. Um, I don't know if everyone else can, but you can see here on the left, uh, he's got some nice new Java fern. And then over on the right, starting to see some of those holes starting to see it get a little brown starting to, i see a little bit of yellow it's just kind of melting away so with what we've looked at and and looking at these if, if we take a um i'm trying to bring up a larger version of it for me because i just can't see that aha i got it okay so looking at um and these leaves are not necessarily the new leaves from what it looks like it looks like these are fairly established leaves. I don't know how old this plant is in of itself. Um, but with the, the, it doesn't really look like it's reabsorbing itself. So phosphate deficiency doesn't, it doesn't hit me as that. But the leaf is definitely melting away, but it's more like the, the brown patches are probably melting away. Yeah, in my mind, to me, this looks like it could be more of a nitrate um, deficiency, but it also still, you know, has some of the um, almost characteristics of a uh, maybe potassium and phosphorus, you know, maybe the the big three, the big three nutrients, but it definitely yeah. for them, it, it's looking like some nitrates to me. And the hard thing with Java fern is, it doesn't typically, it doesn't react quick like a stem. Plant. Yeah. Um, it's a slow grower. So it's you, it may take, you know, a little while of low nitrates before you realize it. Um, so yeah, in my mind, that almost looks like a nitrate um, deficiency. The more I yeah. look at it. I could see that on, on your old growth, you've got it just starting to, and a lot of times with mine, I will find them, uh, you know, the leaves floating around where they've, you know, they've fallen off the rhizome and they're no longer part of the plant. Um, so I'd be interested in hearing what the nitrates. Oh, wait, we've got it. Um, could be my nit nitrates are really, really low, like five parts per million. So I, th I think that's probably it. Maybe a little bit of both, you know, might be a little bit of, I don't really see any pinholes is the thing that, you know, cause we always talk about potassium and, 
um, Java Fern. You don't see pinholes here. You just see where it kind of turned brown and yellowed and starting to melt away. Um, with the uh, with the nitrogen, doesn't it typically start more toward the end though? Because it, it's odd the way this is melting from one side to the other. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, it definitely. I've seen. That's the thing. I've seen nitrate, you know, occur really throughout the leaf. Um, it can. Okay. It does start at the tip of a leaf, but I'm not. Um, I, I think it's probably, you know, a combination of nitrate and uh, phosphate, just because a lot of times if you're lacking in nitrate because you typically dose, you know, um, you're all in one. A lot of people may do with MPK. If your nitrates are low, then a lot of times your phosphates could be low mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, so I'm going to say in my mind, it's nitrate and phosphate. Okay. I think I agree with that. I don't think it's potassium here, which is when I saw that it was Java fern, I expected that to be the discussion. I'm not looking at, you know, I didn't really closely look at the picture. I just saved it and put it on the, in the slides. So, all right, next one. This is some hornwort also from Dave. Um, the picture is kind of hard to see, but the words here tell a, a lot of the story melt and shed and that is the thing i hear the most about hornwort is that um people love it it looks good it's this bushy plant that looks amazing but once you make it angry it sheds and just completely fills your tank full of these little needle-like leaves <laughs> yeah definitely i'm in my mind i think hornwort is almost more of a pond plant when i think of yeah. hornwort um, I've never, I've never had success growing it in an aquarium and I've always got too fed up with the needles getting mm -hmm. absolutely everywhere. So I don't know, it, it, like it depends on how long it's been in the tank as well. Mm -hmm. Um, could be transitioning from an outdoor pond or something like that. I, I'm not sure. That's true. It could be that, um, you know, it was grown outdoors and maybe it was getting a lot more light. Um, yeah, I, I've never had hornwort because I was always afraid of this happening. And, you know, it also depends on how quickly it melted because a nutrient deficiency is not going to necessarily cause a plant to die in yeah. like a couple days or even a week. You know, you're going to, it's going to be more of a slow, um, uh, slow death of the plant or you know there should typically be signs yeah so they six, said six days i'm i would be saying that that's more than likely it melting from transitioning from where where it came from previously yeah yeah from from what i've heard it's a pretty it's like uh crips you know a lot of people say crips if you move them they get angry and melt and i've heard similar things about hornwort so it could be a transitioning issue <laughs> Zen Ginger is talking about how hornwort always becomes the Christmas tree that you don't take down until late January yes. and the leaves end up all over the tank, clogging the filters. That's what I've heard. Yeah. I saw Big Shrimp in his here. Welcome. And also Regina Phalanges. I don't believe we said hi. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. All right. the, one of the stores I used to work at, we had a tank that hornwort specifically went into and it constantly needed cleaning like three yeah. times a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i i'd like to find someone who has a lot of success with horn work because i see it online and it looks great but i i don't know anybody who's had a lot of success with it um except for in ponds i do know of people growing it in ponds i definitely think it's one of those plants that just does it's better outside <laughs> yeah they says oh wait it didn't go up where did it go well it's gone no more not going there again <laughs> That's what I hear about that plant. Yep. So, all right. Next one. This one came to us from Keep Keeping. I believe this is from you. Keep Keeping Aquatics. Um, it's an Anubius. And you see that the leaf starting to, um, it's not really like a, a melting away, but you can see where it has a hole. There's a leaf underneath there that's kind of turned yellowish, uh, starting to lose some color. But the leaf is like coming apart, fraying underneath uh, or fraying from these holes. 
Yeah. So those two, the two leaves um, closest to us and towards the bottom, right above that yellowing leaf, to me, those all look like older leaves, older growth. I don't mm -hmm. know if, if you're seeing the same thing, Mitch. Yeah, it looks like it's growing to the right. And so the, the ones on the left, you know, probably up and to the right, but, and then there's some smaller leaves above it, what looks like it could be. So I agree. I think those are older leaves. And it looks like that is actually from Nancy B in Tennessee. This oh. Anubius. Oh, Nancy B in Tennessee. Thank you. That's right. Um, keep keepings. I've got it on the internet. So yeah, and I, if I'm reading correctly, it looks like Nancy says that those are the older growth. So that would lead me the yellowing of the leaves. Also, some holes in the leaves could be mm -hmm. some potential pinholes, maybe. What do you think, Mitch? I've got my two. Yeah, so I it looks like so there's two leaves here that have kind of been munched on. Something's eating on these, I think. Um, but the one to the left looks like it does have pinholes. Um, I, I think I can see the substrate underneath it. Um, so that is that's leading me there. Um hmm. the yellowing on the one is making me think there might be some nitrogen issues. I I agree with that. I think I'm thinking potassium and nitrogen. Yeah. I believe so too. And you know, it could be it could be also the, another NPK, you know, because you've got phosphate, yeah. um, some yellowing on the older leaves. Um it could be a combination of the three. I don't know. Um, let's see. Nancy B says only shrimp and ram's horns in this bowl. Do you ever test your nitrate? I would assume yeah. with that low, it's practically nothing unless you're dosing. Yeah, it's probably low. Yeah, and, and the ram's horn, I, I really do think, so. I mean, obviously something's chewing on these too. I don't think they're falling apart like that. Um, they're probably getting the holes, getting a little soggy, and that becomes a good snack for the for the ram's horn. I I see my ram's horn on uh, my leaves that are are melting away, so I I believe they'll eat on it. Yeah, they mostly you know if you it looks like that the tips of that that, that anubius has probably started dying off, and they they definitely go after any uh, dead dead plant matter or melting or dying off yeah. plants. All right. I, I think that's, I think that's it. I'm going to try to bring up one more before we leave. If I can remember how to get it. Um, I'm going for a specific window. Chrome tab. I want to go for the Chrome tab and see if I can walk myself through this. Here we go. There's my inbox. Let's share that. Everybody see that? Now, yes. is is this a Java fern? That looks like. Or is it a? Is it a type of crib? It looks like it's got a ladder, like it's growing laterally. So it makes me think there's a rhizome out of the picture. They're really small. Micro sword. Micro yeah. sword. I think another name is like the dwarf chain sword. How long have you had the plant in that tank? I think I recall you saying you'd gotten some new plants recently. So you were told it was micro sword. Um, so micro sword is different from um, dwarf chain sword. I, I have had both. Um, it, in my experience with plants, you never know what you're actually getting <laughs> sometimes. Um, my dwarf chain swords grow more like a, um, uh, well, they're, it's like an Amazon sword. You know, it's, uh, what's that term? It's escaping me. Uh, they grow around that? a circle. Rosette. Thank you. It grows from a rosette. But when I had micro swords, they did not grow from a rosette. Um, and I don't know that I ever got very far into growing them. Uh, mine did not look like that either. Yes. Yeah. That I, I just looked up micro sword real quick. That, that is micro sword. Um, okay. 
Uh, and it's also known Liliopsis brasiliensis. Um, it's a foreground kind of, you can use it as a carpeting plant, uh, plant. Um, and it kind of grows from runners. Um, I, that was actually one of the first plants that I'd gotten back in, uh, in one of my first tanks. But if you've had that for two days, you'll find a lot of the, the micro sword is another plant that's commonly grown immersed. Um, mm -hmm. and that definitely looks like it's going to be transitioning from yep. its old growth. Um, old immersed growth and it's going to have to have some new aquatic growth. Yeah. And it looks like it has been doing that because what threw me off is it like, it looked like you had, like I was picturing a rhizome underneath as and the plants were shooting up like that. But now I see it after looking at, uh, it was very tall, a lot taller than the micro sword that I had, or it might just be the, the picture. You may be very close to the plant. Um, but I see it now looking at, uh, some of these other ones and I agree. I think it's transitioning. I think we had another, let me see here. Let me switch. Let me switch here and see if I can get to, I saw another email come through. Um, we'll pull it real quick. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That definitely. I should have looked at this. Here we go. Let me pull this up. If I can figure out which one it is now. It looks like Nancy B just got some water sprite. I love water sprite. It grows like crazy. You know, funny thing. I had water sprite for years. Um, I, I'm going to zoom. I can zoom in on this thing, I think. Aha. There we go. It's back here in this back corner. Can you see my cursor when I do this? Uh, yes. Okay. I was wondering. That's good to know. Uh, so it's back here in this right corner, and I agree. I, th I think it's just transitioning. How long have you had it? Looking back uh, in the comments, it looks, if this is, this is keep keeping aquatics plant, correct? Mm -hmm. Looks like they said two days. Okay. Well, and it de they they said they kept it. They did have it aquatic. Um, it depends on how long they had it. Mm -hmm. um, I I think give it some time. It, it's a sword though, so definitely make sure you got some nutrients in the substrate underneath it. Um, I did not have the best of luck with them, uh, but my micro sword never got that large. It was very and I when I look up micro sword, I see both what I had and what you have, and I can see that what I had should have eventually looked like yours <laughs> but um, i didn't get that far so uh, i i think it is transitioning a little bit and it might not even be you know they may have had it in water but the water may be different than your water so it may be dealing a little bit with that um it's growing like that in the other tank too but bought the but bought them the same day yeah i think that's going to be it uh, give it some yeah. time make sure it has some root tabs Definitely. It looks like you've got some gravel substrate, so I would just make sure and get some nutrients in that substrate and mm -hmm. you'll be a whole, it'll make things a whole lot easier. And like Mitch was saying, even if they did have it in a tank, more than likely they haven't had it very long. Yeah. So it still hasn't really transitioned. Uh, and then let's see. Big Shrimpin says, yep. if you buy a plant grown immersed, would it speed up conversion if you just cut those leaves off when planting, or is it better to let them melt? I think this is a really good uh, question, um, and I'm going to talk about crypts with this, um, because those are one of the most commonly known plants. I mean, crypt melt is what everyone hears when you say crypt. And what I actually do, and I, I picked this up from some forums, um, it wasn't my uh, idea coming up with it. If I get a new crypt or, and if it's got some, I can tell that it's the immersed, an immersed grown plant, I'll take off most of those leaves as long and leave a couple, you want to leave a couple leaves so it can photosynthesize. It um, but the more leaves start, once some leaves start melting, it can cause almost a chain reaction and other leaves will melt. Um, as well so 
Yes, I would cut off some of the leaves, but not all of them. And it depends yeah. on the plant too. Right. Yeah, for, for me, I try to pick out the leaves that look like they're going to be melting first. A lot of times you can, I mean, anytime you get plants, you should trim off any of the leaves that don't look healthy um, before you put it in your water because um, those are going to melt. It doesn't matter what you do. They're, they're damaged. They're gone. So go ahead and cut those off. And when you do, most plants that will promote it to, you know, to, con to grow, it'll promote it to create a new leaf. And so what I do is I remove all the damaged ones and then, you know, give it a few days and I look again. And if I've got a leaf that is starting to melt, I, I go ahead and take it off because that plant's going to waste nutrients on that leaf, trying to get as much as it can out of it. Whereas if I just remove it, it's going to start putting that energy somewhere else. So um, I would not top, you know, cut everything off of it all at once. Um, but I will say this, I one time melted all of my plants and they all came back. And when I say all of them, they had no leaves. They were just root balls. <laughs> I, I still have the Amazon sword. I still have uh, the Anubias. I mean, I lost everything. That Anubias had one leaf on it. Um, and I left that leaf as long as I could. I mean, it was going, but I left it because I knew it needed it to get some, you know, for the, uh, for the process of photosynthesis. I wanted it to have at least one leaf. But my chain swords, I had a ton of chain swords. Every one of them melted all the way down to the roots, but they all came back. I still have every one of them. I've had that happen with uh, Valisneria, but and especially Crips. Um, but it looks like Big Shrimpin said that they were asking mostly about sword plants. Yes, um, same so thing with swords. I, same thing with swords. I would leave, yeah. um, you know, if you're asking, you know, with the micro sword, like I would probably leave the, the best four or so leaves, maybe. Um, yeah. if you're asking about like an Amazon sword, you know, the, I would do, probably do the same thing. Leave the best two or three leaves, um, cause you're going to yeah. get new growth and it's going to look a lot better. Yeah. I have my Amazon sword. So I have two very large swords and then two plantlets that came off of one of my Amazon swords. And, um, I cannot keep root tabs. I have not mastered getting root tabs to these plants because every every so often I walk by and all of a sudden all the leaves have just started to disintegrate. I'm like, come on now. I just bought root tabs. I had to buy root tabs this weekend. And so um, I'll shove a few more in there and then I'll cut off all those leaves because those leaves are done. They're not going to come back. Go ahead and cut them off and you'll see new leaves already forming and mm -hmm. it'll grow much faster. I, I trim my Amazon swords more often than I want to simply because I can't feed them quick enough. I'm just going to have to put some, uh, you know, that I've been looking at that whole uh, mineral bags underneath the substrate for these plants because uh, I can't keep root tabs in there. Yeah, that's a good point too. Um, any damaged or dying leaves, they're, they're gone. Plants don't, mm -hmm. plants don't heal their leaves. They grow more leaves. So whenever yeah. I do maintenance on a tank, I go through and any, you know, bad looking leaves, I'll just go ahead and trim them off. Um, yep. Just because keeping, they're, they're going to melt or die off eventually. And when they decompose, they're just going to add more opportunities for algae and potentially more die off on your plants. Yeah. So keep keeping aquatic says fluval fluorite. Uh, that's that's not what's in this picture, right? It's this is gravel, isn't it? I really can't tell. It could be the uh, gray, not the gray, but the reddish fluorite. Um, Maybe. But if so, I see fluoride Ray Aquatics is, here. Oh yes, welcome Ray Aquatics. Um, but if it is the fluorite, then that's a good substrate, um, and you should have a good bit of nutrients in there and be okay. Craig's catfish is here as well. I wanted to point out big shrimp and asking what kind of root tabs do you guys use? Um, I do use the co-op root tabs. I know a lot of people in the chat have said that as well. Um, I used to use flourish root tabs and they are great. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I liked those um, better, but I will say that for the money, the co-op has the best deal because you can get 60 of them for like $25 or you can even just buy 20 for like 10 bucks. Um, whereas the flourish are 10 for 10. Um, so it is a better value. I don't, 
I don't feel like the flourish lasted any longer, but I'm mostly feeding Crips and Amazon swords. So I'm, you know, they take in a lot of nutrients. Um, I don't feel like they lasted that much longer. They are easier to put in the substrate, the, the flourish ones, because it's like a cake. It's like a little compressed <laughs> nutrient ball. It's not a ball. It's like a octagon or something. But anyway, you put it down the substrate. It doesn't float. The co-op tabs, you got to kind of work with them a little bit. They're going to pop up a few times. Um, unless you build yourself an applicator or put holes in the capsule. <laughs> but I like them. They're a great value. I would use them for sure. Um, let's see. We are out of time, and I'm just checking in. Oh, fluoride is under it. Okay, so there's fluoride underneath the gravel. Uh, so you, I, I think you're probably good there then. It's just going to have to transition. Yeah. Yeah, just be patient with it. Um keep up with your water changes, but also, you know, make sure you have some nutrients in the tank and more than anything, just be patient with it. It's going to go through some all planted tanks and all tanks really will go through some, you know, uglier phases, but there's light um, at the end of the tunnel for them. Yeah. All right. Well, we've gone over an hour at this point. I, I appreciate everyone. You know, I put the call out there kind of last minute. If anybody would like to uh, send in some pictures. So I really appreciate those of you who did. It w made my day to be able to use the community tab mm -hmm. in that in that capacity already. Uh, so thank you for participating. Um, we'll try to come up with ways to do that in the future as well. And uh yeah, so I, hopefully this conversation was good for you. It was good for us. I feel like it was good for us. And um, I feel like I've got some more ideas on how to approach Java Fern and, um, you know, this Valisinaria problem that I've got. So hopefully it's helped you a little bit. Do some research. There's a lot of great resources out there. I know um, I know the co-op's got a pretty good... Um, I don't remember. Is it like a blog? I guess it's a blog. There's tons of videos out there, but there's a pretty good yeah. blog with uh, details. Um, we've shared the information from the uh, aquarium science website. That's always got good information. And then um, buseplant.com. I think that might've been it. Yes, have, they have a have fantastic, some good information. Um, and I actually read the read, skim through the co-op one today. I hadn't looked at it for a while, but also check out green aqua. That's a good one. Check out, two hour aquarist they have some phenomenal um yeah dave yeah, two hour aquarist yep two hour aquarist fantastic uh, been article. on there myself green aqua um yeah co-op there's a ton of resources what i recommend doing take several compare them to each other yeah see if you know just don't pull all your information from one source um, right even though there are some fantastic sources out there that have you know almost everything there's still going to be some differences and matters of opinion in, in yeah some opinion times. yeah a lot of times it comes from opinion big shrimp and wants to know if we do this every week we do we do this every week on tuesday starting at 8 30 p.m we try to end around 9 30 p.m but the topic was just too juicy too good we had to stick around because uh you know everyone's or not everyone so people sent us some images we want to take a look at them uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, didn't quite work out the time on my end. I, I missed it by a little bit, but that's okay. I appreciate all of you being here, uh, hanging out with us. Those of you on the replay, thank you for checking this out. Um, those of you who have subscribed, liked, commented, y'all are my heroes. Thank you. Everyone who's been in the chat, y'all are awesome. I hope you all have a great week. I look forward to chatting with you both in the community tab and on the fish the fish cord. I have trouble saying that. Um, but yeah, check, check that out. And uh, don't forget about fish fam Christmas. It's coming up. It'll be here next yep. month. Uh, we are participating in that. So I want to make sure I, pl I plug that and let everybody know as well as fish fam dot link is a great resource. If you enjoy streams from the fish fam, uh, you can check that out, find out who's streaming when I believe Bentley Pascal is um, live right now. Uh, so you should check that out. I don't have the ability to send you yet, but one of these days we'll be there. Um, hope you all have a great week. I was going to let you get a word uh, in there, buddy. Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us as always. Um, if you're in the East Tennessee or Nashville area, check yes. out either the East Tennessee Aquatic Association or the Music City Aquarium Society. 
We've both got meetings this week. Typically, they're on different weekends. But if you're in the area, come check it out. It'll be a great time. Um, but thank everyone for joining. Um, and we'll see you all next week. Yep. Enjoy your tanks and stay scruffy. <laughs>